back room, please uh, take care of our sound. And let's um, hear from our people if you are getting us. Yeah, we, we, we apologize. Uh, that has been resolved. Uh, we apologize. Uh, so let, let I introduce the show again. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Focus on Liberia. This is our bi-weekly show, Q&A, with Deputy Presidential Press Secretary, Mr. Smith Tobin. Mr. Tobin, welcome to Focus on Liberia. We are glad to have you. <clears throat> well, let me say thanks to the team. And um, it is, again, a very great pleasure for me to be on your platform this evening, Liberia time, afternoon hours, dead in uh, your state. And so we are very happy that uh, uh, today we've come again in our quest uh, to inform the Liberian people through your medium. So, so sorry for that. I'm having some feedback from my end here. Let me just sort it out for, for myself quickly. But again, I'm happy, and I'm happy to see the both of you. And I'm very good that um, it's going to be a very good interaction uh, with with what you've lined up to talk about. It promises to be very interesting as we unfold the discussion. So it is always my pleasure. Good to see the both of you. Thank you. And our listeners out there, our audience, please uh, do us a favor by hitting the share button. Invite someone, and let's have a sit down with presidential deputy presidential. Press Secretary, Mr. Smith Toby. Mr. C. A. Mr. Jad, uh, we have the ear of the president and we also have his mouthpiece. But our business here is to ask the questions that Liberians uh, have and so that they can get the answers that they deserve, thereby uh, giving Smith Toby his uh, responsibility. Uh, to provide the, 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 the answers. And so, folks, let's get started here. Uh, Mr. Tobey, one of the major things that happened uh, of recent is <clears> the <throat> incident that happened in Zwedru, uh, Grand Jida County. Uh, we know there were accusations here and there, as will always be the case in any political terrain. And I am one of those who said that the president need to, needs to say something I said that President Nina to say something. And after several days, uh, the president issued a statement. And what we gathered from the statement was that those who love him and support him uh, should not engage in violence. And I think that was a balanced statement. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to hide my recognition of, of that and that people should not engage in violence. Uh, even if the, those who support him. So my, my, my question is, why it had to take the president so long uh, to make a statement that, you know, I felt was a good statement? Well, again, um, let me understand greetings from the office of the president mm -hmm. uh, to your viewers uh, in Liberia and those of the uh, viewers outside uh, as outside of Liberia as well, that are following your show. Um, it's been a very difficult few days for the president, and especially on the passing of his daughter, um, who was laid to rest on yesterday. But again, the duty of the Liberian people remains the paramount concern of the president. And um, going to your question as to why it took so long for the president to issue the statement issue on the situation in Grand Uh I'm not sure it's going to be a fair statement if you consider what the president issued to be something that took a very long time. Like I stated on your platform during the edit, um, start of that situation in Grand I'm sure we, we talked about it here on this platform as well. Uh, we had several different accounts coming in from, from the situation that unfolded in Grand Gide. And again, there were different uh, twists to the situation in Grand <clears throat> Sorry for that. 
and there were claims and counterclaims on the situation that unfolded in the county. And so the president being the commander in chief, and of course the head of state had to take some time to get a clearer picture as to what unfolded in the county. That is why you saw the Ministry of Justice involvement in it. The Joint Security had to get involved because the statement came from all of the actors, including Mr. Edizana Cummings, Honorable Yeke Koluba, the superintendent, the youth of the county. They all had different story relating to the situation in Grand Gita. So the president had to digest all of those information. And based on the information gathered by the president, the president thought it was now fit as a president to again caution Liberians. Because in the face of what happened in Grand Gita, those who were agitating were agitating in the quest for love for the president. Mm. And if you love the president, there's no need to be violent to show your love. Mm. So the president was very clear after he got out of the information as to what happened, that those who support him and claim to love him should desist from violence. And if, if you love him as a president who's been very peaceful, if you've been peaceful be before becoming president, and there is no need for you to express your agitation with people uh, by being violent. So it was just a clarion call mm -hmm. to the, the generation of young people who believe in him and the generation of people who believe in his leadership that no matter how people get out and insult his mother and say things about him, whether positive or negative, his supporters and lovers should not return and know his love for him with mm. violence because if, okay. if those violence turn chaotic, it affect his administration. So it was just the president way of sending a caveat out there to people uh, who sympathize, who empathize, who love him to remain peaceful while they you know, address their issue against people who they claim are not being polite to him or polite to his administration, but violent should not be the way forward. So it, it was just a, a clarion court made by the president. And again, gave it a face to Liberians that no matter our, our misunderstanding, no matter our political differences, we should no longer turn our country into a violent state. That and that is, that is the engagement of the president. So that, that comment did not come late, but rather the president had to listen, cut across the, the zero information that came to his office and um, hear the, 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 the viral players into the situation. And I think he came up with a very conclusive statement owing to the fact that we all operated in one country and we should remain peaceful. So um, I don't yeah. want to consider it as taking long, but I think okay. it was being, it was properly being, being analyzed so that it can serve the intended purpose. Thank you. But uh, has there been any concrete actions following that letter? I think that's the main thing people want to look at because if those people, people that are engaged in violence are brought to book, then it actually it really concretizes what the president is saying. Well, that's, that's, that's the reason why the investigation um, set up by the Ministry of Justice, uh, uh, they are still following that situation in Grand Chile. It is not off the hook yet. Uh, you remember that the Ministry of Justice through the Liberian National Police and other state actors, the Joint Security, uh, launched an investigation into that um, unfolding situation or that unfortunate situation in, in Grand Gile. So it's been investigated. We are waiting to see as to how early the Justice Ministry through the, uh, uh, the investigators can, can pull hands as to what happened actually in the county. And those who will be deemed culpable or responsible for uh, instigating violence in a part of the country will be brought to book. So that investigation um, stayed ongoing and we are looking forward uh, to the Ministry of Justice uh, through the office of the Antony General uh, to come forth with his uh, funding as mm -hmm. to the actual cost 
of the standoff in Grand Gillette. If you listen to Mr. Cummings, he gave a very different story. He listened to Mr. Honorable uh, Jacob uh, Holba. Uh, he got his picture of the story. The superintendent have a different account of the story. The investigators will correlate all of those different information, and uh, they will come back to the public and uh, put forth their findings of the investigation. My next question on that is: uh, This was not an isolated incident. We saw that in uh, Grand Bassa County. We also see a lot of these, uh, especially the youth clashing in Monrovia. One of which was clashes between two groups in the um, ANC. So the, we see young people throwing stones a lot. In your view, what, what do you think is responsible for this? And what and uh, has the government been very forceful in kind of dealing with these situations so that there is no recurrence? Because we see them happening over and over. What I think it is not just about the, the government uh, being forceful. It is about the, the, the young people that follow those leaders. So um, why it is true that sometimes it is counter, but it is always good that political actors also take hold of their followers. So when people tend to be provocative and not savored in exercising what they claim to be the democratic right, and they are provoking one party to the other, these standout do occur. And what the government has always done is to intervene. The government is responsible to provide the corridor. They've done that for all political parties, all Liberians under the organic law of our country. That is our individual constitutional right to move freely in the land space of our country. So if your movement is being hindered uh, due to political activities, those who are ahead of those political institutions or groups of Liberians who are instigating violence in part of the country should also take the responsibility to talk to their followers. The government will always play her part. But if you see the generation of young people that follow politicians and the way they respond to some of the situation in, uh, in favor of their political institution, They've always brought this kind of a standstill, whether it's in Grand Bassa, someone is agitating because of political standard in Grand Bassa, or what is happening here in Moserado County, the young people are agitating because someone is attacking their political leader. It is time that all parties put their hands on decks and, and of course talk to the followers that at the end of the day, we're talking one like here. We're talking, we're talking about the development of our country. When people get angry, they destroy, and then we'll have to refix. And the resources we are taking to repair damaged infrastructure or, or the resources that will that would not go to the economy on a particular day because people are angry is also affecting the growth of our country. So until we all see it as as you know as a challenge for us and not just put it squarely on the lap of the government, but individual political parties, political leaders, security people. Then, of course, we will put an end to this uh, sort of a situation. But until that happens, uh, people always get dissatisfied. But the government, mm -hmm. again, will have to provide the corridor, the mm -hmm. needed space, so people can move about and exercise their democratic rights. And, and so far, there has been nobody arrested, nobody brought to book when these things happen. I think that's where the major issue lies. No, I, don't, I, I will not agree with you on that note, because I know uh, there's been altercation here that the police have arrested. People, people have been been prosecuted for their involvement into, uh, um, if not protests, but violent action that have impeded the movement of other people. Uh, so people uh, don't normally get involved into those situation, and, and and they've been allowed to to walk free in the city. That's why police officers or security actors in our country will always intervene, and people at times are arrested. Even sometimes the leaders of some of those gangs or some of those groups or some of those uh, individuals who lead young people or lead people to those actions are equally arrested. You hear people go to police station, they've been freed by the lawyers. And so that's the way we've experienced that. So it is not always the case that mm -hmm. these things happen and, 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 and there's no arrest. There's been several arrests and I'm sure there's been several prosecution made in that arrest. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are just joining us, we are in conversation with Deputy Presidential Press Secretary, Mr. Smith Toby. This is our bi-weekly session Q&A with 
Mr. Smith Toby. Mr. C. Yeah, yeah uh, Smith, the president has a lot of young people following him. And the CDC has recorded in its history now this repeated violence after the other. Just right now, today, in the uh, Claritine right. area, there is violence going on. The candidate of the CPP, Darius Dillon, in Montserrat County, went on a campaign trail. Uh, recent reports ongoing right now that, you know, that stone throwing going on. And what we've seen, what I have seen, you know, as I follow these things is that only when the opposition people show up, then there's violence. I don't recall where the government people show up as an, as, as, at, a, at an event for opposition people to start. That is my uh, recollection. Anytime the opposition figures try to have an event, they will be provoked by the government people. And the president is saying, if you love me, don't engage into violence. Do the young people really love this president? Do they really listen to him? So with the prevailing situation, the first thing we are not yet being clear for campaign activities in ahead of the December 8th election. Mm -hmm. So what I know people are currently doing, if they are campaigning, then that is also not the right way to proceed. Uh, there's no um, clear definition. I know that the National Elections Commission have set up the timetable for when campaign starts ahead of the election in, in Mussorado or in Liberia for the senatorial election. Politicians are eager trying to energize or mobilize their supporters. Again, like I, like I said, uh, the young people who sometimes react the way they do, uh, may be doing it again, and people always want to attribute that to the, the office of the president or the president law for young people. Now, having followed the situation in Clara Town, but for you to attribute a situation to, of opposition uh, to say the CDC as a political institution. I'm not a spokesman for the CDC, and I will not pretend to be uh, a spokesman for the political institution, but to attribute people action to their political institution. So what is the reliance that those who are countering or having situation in Clara Town are from the CDC? Mm -hmm. So what is the, the, the evidence to that effect? Is it because our opposition political leader is there? So until we, we, we investigate the cause of what you seem to be monitoring, it is too early or it is not too appropriate to jump the conclusion that mm -hmm. those who are involved, again, young people, if the message of the president is going across, it should go across to all Liberians, not just young people of the CDC, or young people of the ANC, or young people of the NPP. The president message went out to all Liberians. If you love me, I love your country, desist from violence. So when people get involved in the violence, then of course the police that restore law and order should have them arrested and investigated. So if there's a standoff taking place at a particular location, the police will intervene. Those who are continually causing disturbances in our country under the pretense of showing love, whether to the president or to the political or follow somewhere in the opposition political party. This country is governed by, by laws. It is not a violent country and no one should take advantage of, of the law. If at all you go about in knowing what is on the book, then you should have yourself to blame. All right. Go ahead, Dennis. Yes, I wanted to just give Mr. Smith just an example of someone who is a CDC partisan and was engaged in some form of violence. And uh, so when the president said, if you love me, you know, don't do violence. I'm thinking about Mayor Koji, who there have been reports of engaging in some form of violence. Uh, what, what does that say? Does it say that uh, the mayor doesn't love the president or is he not listening? Like you rightly said, there's been reports 
those reports have never been substantiated. Okay. Uh, so for you to assume that because uh, Koji is the uh, a young man who's driving the young people of the CDC means that his love for the president is not there. Some of those claims are just wild, wild cat allegations. There is no evidence to uh, some of the claims or claims that people made against uh, Mr. the mayor. Mr. Tobey, I, I don't think all the claims are just wild uh, accusations. I, I, I did not say I did not I did not I did not say all. Mm -hmm. I said some of the claims okay. are just wild cat allegations without any proof to substantiate those claims. People, there, there, there are some that have been substantiated, uh, uh, Mr. Tobit. Uh, the one with Koji and the deputy police director, that one has been proven. Uh, the but the president spoke to that. The one the in District 13, when hmm. the opposition and the, the government force clash, that one has been substantiated. We saw blood on individuals. And so that was an engagement of violence on the part of the major. Don't you think so? So you, if you follow the trend of the mayor relating to those situations as mm -hmm. compared to where the major sit now, mm -hmm. you will get to know that some of those situations that, that were claimed that he was directly involved into, mm -hmm. he's been questioned about them and he's been warned about them. He's been a vast about his presence and his activities with young people. And so if you if follow those instances, maybe six months back, mm -hmm. bringing it to where the mayor said currently, you know mm -hmm. that it is not the same kind of situation like you saw with those situations six months back. So if the mayor, for example, did not listen or haven't listened to his party or to the president, then his, his action from maybe a year back will still be in progress. But you no longer see Major Koji or his activities as you are relating in the last six, five months back to his current status. So if people acted over zealously on something and right. that did not go, well, go go down well with the principal, right. they are caught. They are, they, they, they are checkmated. And once you are checkmated, then you need to take a cue from, from that particular point. Thank you. Finally, from, me, from my end on this segment, uh, since the president came to power, you are a practicing journalist before uh, working for the office of the president. Mm -hmm. There have been so much protest and violence. And I will say that the amount of violence that we've seen so far did not happen on uh, the previous administration within their first three years period. If you do account, we didn't see that. Is it because the, the president has failed to unify this country? So we know that the issue of reconciliation in our country has been a very huge tax. If you go back to the former president, Ellen Johnson, said administration, in her last statement to the nation, after 12 years, she told Liberians that reconciliation in our country has been a very difficult task. And she did not succeed in reconciling the country in 12 years. Even though we have peace, but we still had the issue of reconciliation. Our political differences, the hate among young people, uh, the disagreement on issue uh, seem to hold us and hurt this country badly. So reconciliation is key. It is not about the president initiating reconciliation. He's tried, and he will continue to do that. We've invited opposition political party actors to hold discussion as to moving the country forward. That's the spirit of reconciling the country. But people are divided. People are so hateful in our country nowadays that every little thing will bring about division. Like you read the said, why all of the protests? Why are we having just every little thing will put people on the street? Everything, someone is, is working, there's a one month delay in, in salary, the group of individuals will take to the street. Somebody riding a motorcycle and hit another person, people get on the street. So the culture of violence seems to be a societal thing until we all 
we as last that and, and, and take it as a society a societal issue, it's going to be a very difficult thing. The president will do his best. He will continue to talk about the importance for us to, to reconcile. But the, the sort of violence you see now, some Liberians right now pretend that they got the situation, they got the answer to everything in the country. So all it does is to criticize everything the president is doing. Thank you. All it does is to send messages out there that seem to be defiling the, the population of our people. And that is not helping us as a country. We would continue to disagree because we come from different ideology. We think differently on, on issues. But if we continue to incite people or instigate young people or elderly people to demonstrate, then reconciliation becomes an issue. You are in the U.S., but just follow the politics of our country. See how agitated, how angry people look. Yeah. Let them think somebody, somebody, somebody will come after you personally. I know, Mr. Something Tobin. that you, something that you least expect. Sometimes the, the, the responses you receive from people are something that just come from somewhere else in this world. And we are not the kind of Liberian that we, we knew ourselves to be all this long. But well, why are we cultivating the culture of hate instead of cultivating the culture of unity? That should be our general question. It should not be the president issue. He is the lead. And he'll continue to try his best to make sure we are united. Th th thank you. Sometimes they say a hungry man is an angry man. Maybe that's why these things are happening. Oh, but let's let's okay. move let's move on to our next uh, question. On the uh, we see that the CDC 2020 TK has been released, and uh, with the uh, candidates, we don't see any female. You are in the office of the feminist in chief. What was his reaction when he saw this list? The first thing um, when I saw your your point of a discussion to me, and I, I, I had to to run through it and say, "Oh, but wow!" Uh, again, I, I want to make a disclaimer on this one because party-related issues are difficult to talk about. Mm -hmm. But you need to picture the president as a single partisan of the party. Yeah. So the party is run by its own hierarchy. The party is run by the governing council. The party has a chairman. And the activities of that party is being run and managed by those who uh, run the activities of the party. The president, the, the president is not uh, the man who runs the party. Uh, the president did not go to any of the uh, primary site. Mm. Uh, so the party okay. ran... The, the, the party so, sorry, ran... Totally. So, sorry, I, I'm not saying the president is responsible for the slate. All, all I'm asking is, what was his reaction when he, when the female is chief saw that there is no female? But again, that decision comes as a party's decision. Uh, he he may not see it as um, as something um, hundred percent good for the party. How did the, he party see it? Going, the, the, the party is going to a contest. And the thing that they need to put up the best candidates, we are not saying that the females are not the best candidates, but the way the party conducted their primary, uh, the spokespeople of the party, including the chairman, may have better explanation. But from the way the president has seen it, he takes it as, as the party's decision to an election that they, they opt in to win more seats, if not all of the seats. Mr. Smith, we just want to know what was the president's reaction? He being known as the feminist in chief, someone who supports women, 15 candidates, and he received this listing or he saw the report about his party candidates without a single female. Did he not react at all to this? But what, 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 what sort of reaction do you expect from a president? who can also go to a meeting, and the meeting is, is not chaired by him, it's chaired by the chairman of the party. That same party can, 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 can impose a vote of no confidence in the president as, as, as a single partisan, uh, because he's a member of their party. So the party's decision is the party's decision. The president may disagree with, with them not having a female candidate on the list, but the party will not, the president will not dictate to the party to impose a female candidate on the list, because uh, he's also a partisan. He's a yes. single partisan. So, so the president is okay because it's the decision of the party, even though he's a feminine in chief, he's okay with that decision from the party because that's the party's I want, decision. I want you to take it as a party's decision and not the president's decision. If the president starts to dictate to the party, then it becomes an issue. 
if the party mm. start, if the president starts to impose people into the party primary, then again you start to hear all of the whole about around the, the primary. Well, Smith, I, so, don't, don't you think the president has the right to disagree with his party decision? No, the president, the president, the president, the president individually can yeah. can disagree. Yes, he can disagree with the and party that decision. Is our but question the to you, that but, is our question but the president, to you, because that decision but the president by the party simply, contravenes his stand on feminist issue uh, uh, in Liberia. He's the feminist in chief. Yeah, the president being feminist in chief of the country would love to see more females participation in all political parties. Even the there's that there's a line in the in the election procedure as the parties are registered for the election that you have 30 percent women women participation okay. in 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 the process. But if if a ruling party makes a decision mm -hmm. and that decision comes from the governing council, it comes from a, 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 a body set by the party. The president was he's seen it and yeah. he takes it as his party's decision. He, he 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 may disagree with the 15 candidates, but the disagreement would not would not impose his decision on the party decision. That, that's, because he's, that's a part, he, he's, that, he's a part of the institution. That's the institution decision. That, that's fair. We're only asking for his personal opinion, you know, whether. If you were there, what up? When he saw the lace, maybe he got his face fell or something like that. Or oh, like in the last time when um, when the party chairman made some statement, those statements were deemed as legal talk. So I was thinking <laughs> this was some legal action too. But maybe no, not. no, 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 no. Those are those those action that brought those individuals on the party's ticket. Uh, a genuine uh, uh, right. uh, uh, procedures and, and processes that took place. And uh, the, the president being an institution uh, 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 builder, and of course, uh, Menwu is here to institution decision, um, have accepted what the party has put Thank forth you. as the best choice for a very competitive election coming up. Thank you. We can move on to the next. All right, folks, you are watching Focus on Liberia. This is our bar weekly program, Q&A with Deputy Presidential Press Secretary Mr. Smith Tobe. Uh, Smith, there mm. is a release that came out reason it from the office of, let's say from the government, so to speak, on the issue of rape. Uh, rape has been on the increase and we had you here the other time. We, we, we were like, are your neck? What is the government not doing anything about this? And then we saw this release. I will just read the first paragraph and then I will ask my question. Moreover, June 30th, 2020, the government of Liberia, under the leadership of His Excellency Dr. George Manawia, on Wednesday, June 29th, 2020, concluded a special stakeholder meeting on the overview of the status of rape and other sexual and gender based violence cases in the country. The meeting followed a month long engagement and the government interministerial task force on SGBV. Now, throughout the statement, what we gather is that the government has decided to take some measures to curtail the, 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 the rape cases that are on the increase in the country. Uh, this is not the government first time promising, having meeting and telling us that they're going to do something. And they will say it and we will not see anything. So why should we trust the office of the president or the government this time around? So let somebody take that statement for granted. Mm -hmm. If 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 the government didn't do it on yesterday, mm -hmm. let someone take the yesterday action to PM what will happen on today. Okay. Like you rightly said, the last time we spoke here, I told you uh, the president we're holding several consultation on this rape issue. And so to have the involvement of stakeholders on that issue with um, different accounts on the way the situation of rape you know, seem to be on the increase in the country, it is not going to be the normal politics, uh, human rights issue. And you know, sometimes it, it, it becomes so annoying to the point that you see the perpetrator and you see people go to the defense. All because there is a rib law on the book that seems to be somehow 
relax on some of those issues. Now that from the 29th of July meeting with all of the stakeholders and major players in our country, putting the importance to the issue of rape, the government is not going to turn a blind eye on that situation. If the government did seem in, in some time pass, no one should take what the government have decided to do or is planning to do uh, in, in reaction to rape. I have seen people come personal with me on this rape issue on your show. Some ladies here get very angry every time I talk about it and I say the government is holding, uh, holding consultation. The government, the president is talking to people on this issue. So, oh, why the president is not taking action? Why the president is not taking action? So the president action would never be unilateral. And the president action becomes more of, of, of a weight when, when, when stakeholders are involved. That is why out of that state, stakeholder meeting uh, with, with one voice, all of those who seen the issue as alarming as it is, have seen that uh, there should be a redirection and, and a vigorous fight against rape. And because the president is the feminist in chief, again, he's sent of a caveat. And that caveat would not be taken for granted. So those who who thinking that the president and his team or the stakeholders are just playing the normal uh, diversionary tactics and is going to continue in that direction. There are several different recommendations. Some people think that we should castrate those, those, those individuals. Some people are even recommending that uh, uh, they, 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 should be, they should be killed, they should be sentenced. So whatever that will come out of, out of this kind of a conversation, the government is not going to take it you know, like the normal uh, somebody who just raped, then one lawyer come in and say, uh, I will stand for you. And you know, there's a juvenile court in three counties right now, Mosorado, uh, Tim Bong and Nima, on rape, on rape issue, the fast track rape cases. And the government is going to make sure the president is very is very strong on this issue of rape, and he's not going to turn a blind eye on it. Mr. So Tobe, no one takes his comments for granted. Mr. Tobe, uh, I'm glad you yeah. referenced you know the anger expressed by a few of our sisters on the network when we had you. Uh, yeah. Do you really share their anger? Do you know where they come from? Does the president share, you know, uh, woman anger here that as young as babies have been raped and, and like the whole country is just looking around for somebody to come ahead? Everybody is helpless. Do you identify with their anger? Does the president also identify with this woman anger? Look, before before I even got to this position, where I sit today as. Uh, as uh, deputy spokesman for the office of the president. Mm -hmm. I work for the Ministry of Gender. Uh, I did some work for, for UNICEF under the Ministry of Gender under the Edwin Johnson administration. So I knew that the issue of rape, you know, came to that ministry on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. There's been so much international fight, quest on this issue of rape. I've seen babies where wearing pampers reported of being raped. Parents reporting, you know, the babies being raped. I've seen, I've gone to safe homes set up by the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection where victims of rape cases, you know, some of them coming down with fistula and all kind of a different women, uh, 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 a complicated issue, all because of rape. So everyone feels the pain I'm here, I got a daughter that is 23. How do I feel if she goes through a situation, you know, with, with rape? So every man, every mother, every parent do carry that pain in their heart. So yes, the president do feel it. He listened to it. He's a father, he got, he got girls' children, he got, he got family. And so he, I'm not sure it's anything someone can even marry make about. To even hear that a 14-year-old child, a 12-year-old child, a baby wearing pampers, you know, go to the nearby hospital, see how many cases women are going through because they've gone through rape. Mm. So the issue of rape is a national issue, and I think it's going to be considered a, a security issue because it is a threat to national security. Because people, when people get about in the way the women and men, and I've seen a lot of advocates on, 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 on rape issue. But why are the men stayed involved into, into it? 
So your help, our help, the government will push from another side. We, like I said the other day, we ought to take this thing head on. Mm. And, you know, talk about it, create awareness, talk to people, talk to our, our fellow men so that we can have a clean society. Okay, but again, mm -hmm. because, because it is a government issue and the president is the head of the country, he's the communist in chief, he's taking the lead. Thank you, Mr. Tobey. Just one final thing, and I just want you to take a, uh, maybe 30 seconds to respond to this. The yeah. president said, I have stated on many occasions as feminist in chief that I have zero tolerance for sexual and gender-based violence. He then instructed the inter-ministerial task force to put into place a technical team. Another committee again, Mr. Tobey. This is just, yeah, is, is this not just duplicating all these efforts because there are people responsible no. for this? They are not acting and we are setting up one committee after the other. What's going on here? So it is not going to be the president out about in the field. We know that the Ministry of Gender is the government arm on women and children's issue. They've been assisted by the Ministry of Health. But to get this, the sort of result that we need, there's a need to have other people involved. Okay, thank so, you. So those, so those technical teams you see the president, the president uh, organized or set up is to help the sector ministry, and, you know, to buttress their work and find out as finding the way around this issue of rape. What is going to be from the justice ministry end, it's going to come from civil society, it's going to go down to women organization, or to advocates out there, we all need to take it hands on. So to have the little committees is to buttress the national government effort so that we can curtail this issue, if not to eliminate it. Th th thank you. Uh, Dennis, uh, let, let, let's give Mr. Toby a break. I want to chat with you on this. You know, we have the Ministry of Gender. We have the yeah. Ministry of Justice. We have the yeah. courts. These are institutions that can be used to address this what I want to call pandemic now in our country. And the idea of one committee after the other with final ministry and this ministry and that ministry is a waste of time, in my opinion, Dennis. I, I don't know about you. No, and um, people people always like, you know, because of the system that we have, mm -hmm. people who are supposed to even be doing something, they want to pay lip service to the president. Mm -hmm. So you, you see people are not, doing what they're supposed to do mm -hmm. and they are looking behind their back has okay that like everything you do before you perform the function for which you were appointed you need some green light from somewhere or you are stepping on somebody's toe or doing something so people are not working and so president got to actually know you or give you some form of approval before you do what you are paid to do but now you took oath to defend the constitution and people are not doing that because we have a system where the president is god that is that is sad. Let me progress, uh, Mr. Tobey. On July 26th, during the independence celebration, uh, the president's statement, this is what we capture. I will release very short, uh, and then I'll ask you a question. He said, it is my pleasing duty to bring you greetings on this occasion of the observance of the 173rd anniversary of our funding, of the funding of our dear monoland the Republic of Liberia. Let me also extend phone greetings and best wishes to you from my dear wife, Madame Claire M. Weir, the first lady of the Republic of Liberia, who could not be present with us today due to official duties abroad. My question, how long has the first lady been on this official duty abroad? And is she back in the country yet? <laughs> and, and what is their official duty also? <laughs> Well, official duty um, can be interpreted in, in several different ways. So we know that the first lady has, uh, got caught up in the COVID situation in the United States. And uh, so she stayed in the U.S. But even while she's in the United States, she's mobilizing uh, resources uh, back home. Uh, making sure that those those um, uh, resources are being brought either for her for her institution that she she's running for her office, and of course um, 
keeping government engagement out of the country because most of the government officials now are not traveling, uh, travel restriction due to COVID. So those who left out of the country and got caught up uh, in those countries are also functioning on behalf of the, the government of Liberia. The first day is of no exception to be in the United States. She's at the Liberia embassy uh, there in New York um, on some days, along with the team of, of the workforce there. And, and um, that is an official duty that the first day is on. So uh, she could not come due to the July 26th, again, due to the restriction on travel. Uh, Mr. Smith, uh, you are aware that the first lady we were told it was reported, and it was confirmed that she had come to the U.S. because her son had an injury. And that was the reason she came to the United States. And she couldn't get by because of COVID-19. So are you saying to us that that trait has been metamorphosized into official because the president said she's on official duty? So, like the president says, she's on official duty. So we take the president's word for official duty. The president did not mention in his comments that the, the absence of the first data from the Independence Day program was due to uh, ill health of his son. Initially, when the first day had to travel uh, out of the country, she's gone on a, on a, a duty uh, to uh, seek family issue. Uh, that issue has been long dealt with. Now that uh, she's, she stayed in the United States in the midst of COVID, uh, her duty has become very official because uh, she's, she's in the United States and uh, she's in touch back home with all activities taking place here. That also had to do with her involvement with the uh, community back in the country and uh, with the team of Liberians that are running the Liberian affairs in the United States. All right. Mr. Thank Mr. You. Toby, that, that is... Uh... Planes are going like Liberia now. I know people that left, and uh, I, I'm not saying you should know why the uh, first lady has not left. But actually, even with COVID, I have friends that have traveled to Monrovia. Why is oh, the okay. first lady still here? Oh, so until that official duty of the of, of the first lady and uh, is considered over. over, and then she yeah, okay. then she, then then she she, she returned to the country. Those who are coming back to the country. I'm sure they've completed their duty, you know, personally or private activities. That is why they are back. But at the first day, they're still working uh, and uh, uh, helping the country on the international scene, especially in the United States. Uh, that duty still continues. So once she's back in the country, again, we'll let you know that she's in the country, but she's still on official duty. Talking about first lady, we just saw the interview of another first lady, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Nancy B. Doe. Do you know if Nancy, if uh, Mrs. Doe had met the president and what they have discussed? I, I'm sure you heard her grievance. Well, again, uh, we listen. Uh, I followed the conversation with uh, the uh, former uh, first lady. Again, she brought a lot of sense to the Liberian normal day romance and misinformation about her life. It was touching to hear some of the uh, information that she, she's unveiled. Uh, since that interview, uh, she's yet to meet the president. Uh, I don't want to sit here and tell you that uh, she's met the president, but again, the president uh, did listen to those concerns that she's, uh, she, she raised on the, on the talk show when she appeared on OKFM uh, sometime ago. Uh, those issues that she raised are issues that the government through the office of the president are looking into. And I'm sure that in a very short time, uh, there will be some, some forum that uh, she will meet His Excellency Dr. Weir, because again, the president being a very ardent lover of uh, the late president Samuel Doe, uh, the people of that county consider him to be the son of the former president. That is why so much love comes out of Grand Jida. The president have won more votes in Grand Jida than any other county in election in this country. Uh, that is coming from the backdrop of his connection to the former president. So if the former president have expressed some, some issue relating to benefit and, uh, and situation around um, her life as a former first lady, uh, the current president, who is also considered as a son to, to her in time past, 
I will look in that direction. I'm sure there will be some immediate redress. Right. And, and not just that first lady, there are other first ladies that were listed. And again, it comes to the question of this uh, feminist in chief. We have uh, uh, Mrs. Blah and uh, another first lady, former first lady that was listed. Now I think you have another first former, no, that's one that's not former first lady in, in the country. And it comes down to, uh, you know, the system that we always talk about. What is the office of the president doing, you know, to maybe set up something, not to take care of these people individually, but so that there can be something, some system, something set up to address situation like that. I don't wait because, you know, you are close to this president or you are not close to the other president before the government kind of take care of those uh, former uh, first ladies and other people that need help right now that they're no longer on the job. Well, um, uh, when I heard you reference some of the first ladies, I was thinking as to how many are they here currently? Uh, because I know that the former first lady, Joa Howard Taylor, for example, is in government. And, uh, right. Uh, I, I haven't heard much about former first lady uh, Blah, and so I would not want to speak to that because uh, I've not heard about her activities and what exactly she's up to. Um, the reason why the Nancy Doe situation again has resurfaced is because uh, she had to muster the courage uh, to mm -hmm. come out to hear her talk about benefit that is not going her way. In the last 12 years of former, pre uh, former president, Salif administration, there was no first man anyway. So we can't talk about first, first, first man in that direction. She was here as a former president and uh, there was no first day in that direction. So those 12 years um, cannot be mentioned. But those who, who have served our leaders you know, as their wives, I'm sure there's, there's, there's something in our, uh, on our book uh, that, 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 that turns to be uh, their benefit. So if those benefits are not forthcoming to them, then again, it is something that uh, the leader of the country would need to look in that direction so that uh, uh, they can get those just benefits because they serve uh, the country. Um, they were providing those, those comfort and, and, and counsel to the husbands after a hectic work, and um, the husbands are, are, are no longer alive. So uh, they need to get those benefits. So whatever the situation has been that have prevented them, uh, once this current president is on top of it, I'm sure he's, he's going to make some intervention, and uh, those interventions will also be made known as soon as they are made. Let's go to the firing of uh, Mr. Blama. <laughs> why you want to know how Right. Why, why was he fired specifically? And then we saw, or uh, it was reported in front page, that there are other people that are in the same boat as Blama, but those things... Uh, the president did not take the same action. So people are wondering, you know, whether President Weah is being fair here. So and are you taking the are you taking the front page Africa stories as a reliance for this portion of your conversation? I'm taking that as a report and I want to verify from you. Okay, so um like all other media institutions will report. Hey, and like we will I'm also on media think. now. <laughs> <laughs> And, and and we will also place those information on 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 the executive mansion website. The first thing here is that we all that work uh, at the will and pleasure of the president get fired. Yeah. Uh, the president can sleep one morning and wake up and tell me, "Say, Toby, you are no longer my deputy press secretary. I will be gone." And uh, so it happened. So anyone who carried that green you know, it is it is exciting when you get appointed by the president and your letter is signed by him. You got a green green letter, they call it. But the, the, the disadvantage to that letter is that you work at his will and pleasure. Yes. So he can fire you in a minute. Yeah. Um, he can get you off the job in a minute. So when I hear people question uh, uh, his reason for, for dismissing people that he considers as his confidant, then it's almost the question of the authority in the president. But again, the president had to take the action um, against Mr. Blaman. Uh, you remember the president had just reinstated Mr. Blaman to his previous position at the EPA. That was the clear sound that the president 
knowing the situation around Mr. Blama and condition when he came in country as the index case for COVID, uh, he got suspended off the job. He recovered. Thank God that um, he came out of uh, that situation. It took some time. He got reinstated on the job. But again, when people work in an office, uh, your office also has authority and they also carry a limitation. So yeah. not every one of us that work in government commit the government out there. Even if we go about opening a conversation with people out there, there are others in the government who carry the sole authority to commit government to any activity outside of the country. So, Mr. Tobe, but yes, Mr. go Tobe, ahead. Uh, you are right that the president has the right to appoint and to fire because people are working or appointed to serve as a will and pleasure. That's why we hear all the time. So, I would say that is true. But the president, uh, as a human being, should also fire with a cause. And if you are firing somebody for a cause, you have to state that cause. And so that's why then I asked the question, what did Blama do? Uh, the report is that Blama signed on behalf of the government an agreement. And that is something that the government or the president did not know anything about. And that was a huge amount. So I think they are suspecting that uh, the mayor, the mayor might have gotten some money and that is not to their knowledge. That's why he got fired. But Blama no. uh, is saying they, that they, is not the case. Let me learn. Blama is saying, hey, this is not anything that obligates or binds the government. You know, it's like a platform and in his capacity as the head of the EPA, he's the, uh, the appropriate signatory to any of those platforms that the government can get funds from. So it's similar to what the NTA boss signed. The NTA boss, he was not fired by the president. Blama was fired by the president. And so the question is, is the president fair here? The president the president has been very fair here. So you, you, you're giving two different story or two different procedure issues. So let me take you back, I will take you to the, to the to the NTA issue that you reference mm -hmm. has been bias and why Blaman got fired. The president, the government of Liberia has been holding ongoing discussion on the possibility of having this uh, hydrocarbon uh, seal going on in the country. Mm -hmm. When you talk about hydrocarbon, it is not just about, about EPA. Hydrocarbon also include the FDA. So a discussion on the selling of hydrocarbon should not be an EPA related or sole purpose discussion. If Mr. Blama met very well on the issue of committing the country to a deal, that discussion should have involved the authority at the Forestry Development Authority because the institution at the end of the day that were getting affected in this were more of the forestry development authority that had to do with hydrocarbon. Mr. Blama did not do that. Secondly, after Mr. Blama got reinstated, the executive mansion got to know about the agreement. When the organization that Mr. Blama signed the deal with or the agreement with decided to pay some money to the government of Liberia account. That is when the government got to know. So the government had no prior information. The organization that signed decided to pay some of the money in that, in that contract to the government account. And the government got concerned. How come you intend to pay some of this money that you said was agreed upon into our government account? What is the document to this effect? In fact, it was a foreign uh, mission that elected the government on this agreement. It was when Mr. Blama has already gotten reinstated. So with all of the different information, 
the president thought that it was not appropriate to commit the government of Liberia, one, without the attorney general, the chief, the minister of justice. It is not appropriate to commit the government of Liberia without the minister of finance. It is equally wrong to commit the government without consulting the players in the sector. Because it was not just about the EPA. It was also forestry related you know, benefit that, that that company or that agreement will have to affect. But for the government to know it about it, because the institution was about to pay some money to the government, and then for another embassy outside to enlighten the government on this agreement, the president thought that was something very fishy. And so and that how led... is that different from the NTA or, or scenario? Okay. The NTA boss, the NTA boss issue, if you go back to the Minister of State, go back to the same front page Africa, they did an exclusive interview with the Minister of State on that issue two days, two, three days ago. Okay. The issue at the NTA, I'm told from what I've I've, I've heard, and this one I'm I'm speaking on it because I've followed the conversation around it, that the issue was by far different. That issue at, at, at the NTA was procurement related. It was not committing the country. It was procurement related issue. It was not that the, the, the NTA boss signed an agreement for Liberia, committing Liberia you know, to, to, uh, to another institution or to another organization. But in the case of Mr. Blama, he committed the country and the situation in the country was not just about the EPA. It also had forestry development authority component attached to that. The executive mansion got to know about this when the institution decided to pay the money, pay some of the money. If the government wanted to take this money, this was, it was just accepted the money and allow Mr. Blaman to, to, to do his job. But again, it was dubious for the government to take the money that the Ministry of Justice and the Finance and the entire government had no idea about. All right. So they put a heart to this entire discussion. And that, of course, brought the decision of the president against Mr. Nathaniel Blaman. Thank All you. Right. Thank, thank you. Dennis, you have a question? Then we can move to the next segment. Right. We want to uh, welcome our viewers. We want them to uh, engage. The number has been posted. So we can just move to the last segment of this and then break in our callers. And that will be uh, the one on the coming speech. But viewers, if you are watching us and you want to be part of the conversation, the number is posted. Uh, it's on the screen there. Please uh, call in and interact with uh Mr. Toby. Mr. Toby, we uh uh Mr. C read part of the president's speech, or uh, not speech, part of his uh statement on July 26th, wishing Liberians a happy, happy July 26th. We also saw a major speech or uh, read and heard a major speech that was being delivered by the CPP boss, Mr. Alexander Cummings. And in that speech, he had earlier waged like the Labyrinth people are happy July 26th, but traveling to the Southeast, the place you went a few uh, uh, weeks ago or months ago, he saw the road, the way the road condition was so deplorable, he regretted even telling them happy 26th in the midst of the kind of uh, uh, hardship and suffering that they were going through. But that's not my question. My question here is uh, he lays some charges, big ones on the president. And let me read at least uh, a statement here. Talking about President Weah, because his, the entire speech was about the lack of leadership, incompetence, and everything else that the president and his leadership are exhibited. And this is what he said. However, by their incompetence, lack of vision, extortion, and appeals to division and lawlessness, by the overwhelming evidence of their lack of leadership and the duty to care, in only three years, this Judge We Are Led administration has quadrupled the problems they inherited. Where it was bad, they have succeeded to make worse. And where it was good, they have effectively destroyed. They have reversed the gains our country struggled to make and for which we were recently considered a good example of a developing post-conflict nation. First of all, did the president watch that speech and what was the reaction? You know, we live in a, in a democratic space. 
so we we had, people are allowed to to speak and uh, exercise their rights as it relate to the I think there's a call coming in on one of your, your lines. Am I okay? Yeah, you're okay. okay. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. The okay. call will come after you make your statement. Okay, so you expect leaders, political leaders, advocates to always play around the issue and sometimes hoping that those issues will give them relevance. Mr. Cummins comes from the Southeast. Liberia is 173 years old. George Weah, our president, we are two years in office, minus 173 years old. What happened to the 171 years of Liberia existence? Mr. Cummins have gone on that road times of our numbers. I'm not sure is going to Maryland County was his first time. He's, he's gone there to campaign and uh, to gain vote for his people. He's gone there on private visits. We've experienced the challenge of traveling outside the country. That is why the current president has taken the issue of road to be a very serious priority issue. Even in the mix of COVID, government road network continue. And the government is still trying, mobilizing resources to make sure that Mr. Cummings can have access to his Maryland County uh, that he so cherished so that he, he wouldn't sit there and put the blame on a government that is two years old or a 173 years old country. So that will always be a challenge. And it is the hope of this administration headed by the president that the issue of road after this administration to the counties in the Southeast will be history. All Mr. Cummings and his legs have to do now is to avoid paying people to protest and scare away investors uh, so that the, the environment can remain peaceful so that those who are out there who are thinking love for our country will, will, will come with all of their, their resources to help us build our country. When Mr. Cummings and his team continue to uh, support young people in the midst of a challenging economy and scare people away with continued protests in our country, the road to the Southeast will continue to be a challenge. If Mr. Cummings can continue to disagree and raise those issues without protestation, then of course, we can all be here and talk the talk without putting people out and about on the street, without supporting people to abuse the president. Mr. Cummings will want to be Liberian next president. Oh, oh, hold on, oh, hold on, Mr. Tobey. You are making some allegations here. Well, you are you are accusing Mr. Cummings of putting people in the street one and encouraging people or paying people to abuse the president. Those are serious charges. And, and, but and, if, and, and if, also, if just and many, also scaring investors away, how, how are they so, doing that? So their action, their action. For example, Mr. Mr. Cummings has become a very good friend of Mr. Yeke Koloba. What is the what is the developmental story of Mr. Koloba that we encourage investors to come to the country? How does Yeke action you no know, you know, coincide with Mr. Mr. Cummings' vision for peaceful Liberia? How, 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 how does his action help to bring investors in the country? So if Mr. Cummings can align himself with a man who wakes up in the morning and all he does is to insult the president, is to use provocative words on the president, insult his dead mother, and say all sorts of negative things about the president, and you, you align with him, the man who will get on the street and get on top of the vehicle, eh? So if a political leader is, 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 is in alignment with that action, how does that action help investors to even bring money to face the road that he's complaining about? You're talking about guilty by association. Guilty by association. So it is, it is of no means for him to even sit and say, 
the, the government or the president lacks vision. The president carries a vision. But because he also lacks vision, so he's been linked to people who lack those same vision by their action. If Mr. Cummings is sincere to the Liberian people, as claimed that, that, you know, he's a very good leader, no one doubt his leadership ability. He's a very easygoing young man, you know, soft-spoken. He got his own agenda. He got his vision. But if he is peaceful, as he's claimed, and want to continue to be very peaceful, but his association with people who are instigating protests in the country and protests in the country and part of a, a political alignment that is also associated with, 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 with disagreement. They are right to disagree. Smith, you, I just caught something from what you just said. Um, I'm here. You're not the first person I'm hearing this thing from that Yeke Koloba also insults the woman who of the president dead mona. I have been trying to pay attention closely. I'm not saying he has not said that. It's just that I'm yet to hear that. Can you confirm that, you know, with evidence that Yeka Koloba had insulted the president or dead mother woman? Look, I've, I've gone to a meeting. You remember that once there was a meeting with the president and some members of the national legislature that Mr. Yeka Koloba attended? You remember that? There was a meeting sometime back. Oh, yes. yes when there I was, that. yeah. Mm -hmm. I attended a meeting with Mr. Koloba. I, I even took the photo. That Mr. Kolobad and uh, Mr. President had that handshake that yeah. went on the social that went on the social media, and I heard what Mr. Kolobad told the president. Now, every time somebody that Mr. Kolobad considered to be a supporter or the ardent lover of the president disagree with Mr. Kolobad, he Kolobad will not go after those individuals, but he will rather vent out his anger to the president. He said that to the face of the president. You are not so answering my question, Tobe. You are not answering my listen, you, you just listen, said I'm, 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 I'm has, coming. I'm coming to your question. Yeah, I'm just, coming to your just question. go to it. Yeah, go to it. So so to the point mm -hmm. that you want us to, to give you evidence mm -hmm. of Mr. Koloba insults to the president dead murder, you are of adding user of the social media. And like you read this, I'm not sure I'm the first person who's making this these comments to you. Yes, and and, I've, and, and I've, the reason I'm asking this question, I I've, am I am extremely I've, appalled by it that I've this also, man will I've insult also, the dead mother of the president. I'm appalled by it. I don't want to believe it. That is why I just want to lay something on my hands that will okay. really prove it. Okay, so what I'm going to do for you as a former media man, I've also interviewed Paul about several times before when I even left Boston. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back to my library for you. Okay. I know most of these clips are kept and they can be traced. Okay. I'm going to have you you and your audience someday, once I can uh, get hold of, of some of those, uh, those talks, Our materials. Uh, uh, those materials for you, mm -hmm. we will definitely uh, get and come to your platform. So thank you. Uh, I'm I'm having some problem here. I'm not seeing my, my, my visual on, on, on the screen. I hope. Yeah, I, that, you, that's you okay. Have, yeah. It's okay. We, we can we see can? you. You may not be able to see us, but maybe people but, trying to call you. That's why. But we can see you. So continue. So, 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 Mr. Tobe, we can see you. Let's use this time to bring in our first caller. Mr. Tobe, can, we, can you hear us? So, yes, I'm hearing you guys. Are you getting me? Yeah, let me let's bring yeah, in our if, first Tobe, caller. If you can't see us, leave and come right by because we want you to be able to see us while we bring in the callers, okay? Mr. I'm, Mr. I'm, 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 no problem because I'm also viewing on my on my other phone, so no problem. I'll take the calls. Okay, yeah, good, let, good. let's take the calls. You can please please be there with us because we are trying to wind down now. Yeah. Jimmy James Eastman, you are live. Hey, Mrs. Tobe, how are you, sir? Glad you could well, make good. it to the program. Yeah, you know, always. Mr. Toby, I've always uh, admired you for your balance. You 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 maintain a certain equilibrium, and when you discussing matters, or at the time you are more of a in a journalistic role. Now uh, we we only can hope that you bring that same balance to the office of the press secretary. Um, 
what would you um, assess the because we talk about the youth being um, very agitated, they protesting. What would, would you think is the difference with the youth today and the times when you were youth? And if uh, in that difference, what would you direct youth to behave to as it would now that you have the experience you do? Thank you. Yes, Mark, you can respond was, to that. He's the only caller for now. Okay, so I think I think that's a that, that's a brilliant, a very brilliant, brilliant question. And and uh, like like we've we've always tried in our in our you know weak way we call it here in Liberia to uh, to make sure that um, our generation will not be a disappointing generation. Um, comparing the youth of today to that of the youth of uh, yesterday or, or our days as, as young people, uh, I think there's, there's a very big difference. The youth of this generation uh, carried by technology and, 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 and social activities, a country that is now you know, running in terms of uh, the practice of democracy, political entrenchment, uh, the divide of young people, you know, all of those issues has, are now serving to be a contributing factor to uh, to the way young people of our time, are, are, you know, address. And 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 again, I think one of the fair things to it is that uh, the lack of job creation. Too many young people out there, very less busy doing doing nothing. So they've been carried away by just anyone out there who uh, can help them. Uh, with just anything, and then they follow you. They can they can die for you. They can stand up in the street for you. And in in time pass, I think the, the young people then were very busy, and a lot of things were taking place in our country that did not take the youth off focus. But with so many different factors right now, uh, it's difficult. But again, it is part of a society that we found ourselves. It is challenging for the young generation. And we hope that uh, we can we can succeed in in making sure the young people refrain from that. That's the violent component of it that is that is that is killing. Uh, we can disagree as young people. They can disagree. They can support their political ideology, but to resort into violence is 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 the is the killing part. And I think um, uh, we don't have the space to talk to them. We, sh we should all continue to do that so that uh, they can. They can resist. We can all coexist and, and make our country better. Thank you. Let let me bring in one more caller, and then we read our comments. And that's uh, that will be Kesali Dobo. You are live. Mr. Kesali Dobo. Yes, sir, Mr. John. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Put it on again, and I uh, thank the the uh, guest, Mr. Sube, for coming on once more. But uh, I have to to be saying that uh, it is the opposite that I protest that are causing investors not to come to Liberia. I think that is sad for the person that they even say that. That is very very sad. To be so protested for all those years. From an afternoon of empire, it's just a station to Liberia. I think it is because of the corruption of the government, the government officials themselves know that very well. That have caused investors to come to Liberia. Are you saying that it is a person that also not allowed me to station the girl back in Liberia? Is it a person that are causing that? I don't know if the one that is caught of all of these things. It is a corruption in the government that have already made people, the citizens themselves, not to even have confidence in the government in the first place. So if your citizens in the country do not have trust in you, I don't think you will expect other people to come to other to trust you. So the best thing the government can do to themselves is to discuss the act of corruption first. But it's hard to discuss because the president himself is corrupt, and I think we all corrupt people. We love the same much. Simple, you see the life of Abu Kamara? You should not be beating all around. It's just recently that we are just for every thousand and off. A man who was charged and went to court, had that court case 
But even if it's made up to now, we are yet to understand. But then we have to step into the area of complete criminal, and all the people who are involved in criminal activity, he calls them with the people who create character. So because Smith said it, she starts keep bringing other people to opposition and shape the blame entirely on his government because the government itself is very corrupt. That's the reason why things are going to be going to be ultimately change. It's better without causing change from the criminality so that we can turn the government and come to Liberia and itself in the country. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Tobe. Look, you see, that's the beauty of uh, what we bring to the to the discussion. And uh, people are entitled to the view and uh, they are also entitled to make um, allegations without, without facts. And that, that, that caller who just left the line um, is just one of the many Liberians who who speak about issue of our fight. So even allude in your thinking that the government is corrupt, that's perception. People have said corruption, 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 corruption. And because people have transformed their life, so it's, it's attributed to them being corrupt. Um, if, if, if you claim that people are not investing in the banking sector of our country, then I will tell you that information is also not true. We agree that when the story of the 16 billion or the last 16 billion broke up, that we broke up here then in the media, it gave people the attention to, um, to, to raise eyebrow on our banking sector. And that is why the government have done everything to bring about reform in the banking sector. People have to, again, develop that confidence because when people had the, the claim of running around with the alleged 16 billion situation, no one had the confidence of, 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 of investing or putting the money in the bank and the government had serious challenge with that issue. Is that situation still the same today? It's, it's a big no. The government have once again redeveloped the confidence by putting into place those those you know, mechanism that have helped people to understand the fight from fallacy. So it is not for you to say because people are not putting money in the bank, people are afraid. Liberians are still saving in the in their respective banks. But the next thing I want you to know is that I did not put the blame of investors not coming to the country on the opposition. I was responding to a specific question. And my response to that question was setting an example of some of the opposition people who are aligning themselves to people who are rather instigating violence. So if, if Mr. Yeke Koloba action to you is, is an encouragement for investors to come to the country, who we'll wake up in the morning and see one lawmaker sitting on top of a vehicle because there's a traffic violation oh, and, 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 and think that uh, he's going to come here. So when people action, you know, a contributing fighter to some of the issues that we are experiencing in the country, we need to say a face all. It's not for us to shield people because uh, we like them or because we love them. I did not say Mr. Cummings' action, but I said his association with people, if he claimed to be a very good leader, he should rather be advising people to respect the leader because he he's also up to be a leader. No one wake up in the morning and, and, right. and want to be insulting Mr. Cummings if or he becomes president. But if he, he is encouraging it at this time, there's a comment added here. What goes around comes around. All right. We hear that all the time. Let's bring in this caller here. Uh, Christopher Tubasi, uh, how you doing? Welcome to Focus on Liberia. Yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable uh, Dennis Jai. And uh, I want to say thank you to Mr. Smith Tobe for coming on today because he doesn't like for us to call him Honorable Smith. And so no. I will rather call him Mr. Smith Tobe. Uh, look, let me say one thing here today, you know, uh, for people to even start to ask a question that we should produce a video clip, you know, of Yeke insulting our mothers or even the president's mother, I think it's wrong. I think it is, it, 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 is, it, is, it is extremely embarrassing, you know, because look, let me tell you something to the Liberian people that are listening. This is a man who goes around, Yeke Koluva, 
go, go I mean, he travel all over the country insulting the president mother and the women of Liberia. Tobasa, did, did, did you say it is wrong to ask for evidence? When, when, when it became so wrong to I'm, ask for evidence, I said that I'm, I am a poor I'm, I'm that I'm hearing this, and so I don't want to believe it that this man will go about insulting the woman who of the dead mother of the president. So the only way I will believe it if I see video evidence. So to ask for aid, then you say it is very wrong to ask for evidence. Seriously? You know, because 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 you are you, you because if you ask that question, then it means that like you are not being following this gentleman. You are not being left. Then to said, it. make it easy and oh, just send oh, it to oh, me. Oh. So I will believe it because I don't believe that a man will insult the dead mother of the president who is not alive, who has nothing, she has nothing to do with so the it, politics. Just so send me the video and start quarreling here right? that it is wrong to ask for evidence. No, no, the point I'm trying to make, and I hope you will allow me to make, right, is somebody go to another country and say, I will butcher people like chicken. You should be offended. You as a journalist should be offended. That's because why? It took one journalist in Rwanda to, to, to bring about war. It took one man word to bring about war. Jackie Koluba is going to another country and saying that he will push up people like chicken. It is wrong. It is disgraceful. And we should call it like that. And, you know, I don't want my Lord make up going around, starting the presidency or insulting the president's mom, insulting his mother, insulting our mother, uh, women of Liberia. It is wrong. It is wrong. And you guys should be asking tough questions to Jackie Koluba and Alice Comey. Alex Comey cannot be going around with this man if he claims to be a decent man. We are talking about moral compass. We are talking about moral rectitude. rectitude. We are talking about norms, culture, all these things that we value. Yaka Koluba is a detriment to this society. Yaka Koluba needs to be stopped, and people need to start calling him out on it. That's why I'm calling on you people in the media to call Yaka Koluba out on everything from now on as we move forward. Nobody should come here and tell me they don't know if they don't, they are not seeing this guy behaving like a mad dog. All right, Tubasa, a, thank you again. When we get Yeka Koluba and well, Alexander Cummings, we'll ask these very and, tough and questions. We got some tough tips. questions for them. I will you many tips. Okay, Mr. Mr. Tubasi, hold on. Hold on, Mr. Tubasi, because you have made some, what I call irresponsible comments here because of the question that was asked. So oh, I don't okay, mean, that You can say irresponsible. Hold on, let me finish. Because uh, because the question that uh, that was asked, you said focus on Liberia is justifying Yeka Koluba's behavior, and that is disgraceful. So I ask you, how did we justify yes. the behavior? Because when you get up because to make this the, the when you get the up fact to that make you are acting like you don't know that you are not seeing it, that you are not stopping coming from following or traveling around the country with this man, with no, this, no, no. With this, with this, with this, oh. Mr. Tobasi, hold on, let me finish. A very Mr. Tobasi, the question that was asked was to, to if there is a video where Yege Koluba insulted the president's mother. That was the question that was asked, and you were you are enraged that that means we are justifying Yeke's behavior. That is wrong, and that uh that insinuation again is irresponsible. But but let me go to our next caller. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Finish. So just yeah, go ahead. very clear, and I, will, I, I said for you people in the media world, for you people to ask that kind of question, that you are not been following this man and that you are not heard of these things. You know you have heard it. You know you have seen it. You know you have watched it. You know he have insulted our mother, insulted the president's mother, insulted the president's okay. wife. And you All people right. want you. to sit here and pretend Thank that you, you are not said heard it. will know that we know everything. <laughs> Th thank you. <laughs> you know all. Th th thank you. Let's go to our next caller, 6874. Hey, Mr. 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 Jar. Yes, Mr. Jar, how are you? This is um, Reverend Solomon Moy, and Reverend I'm calling Solomon from Moy. Washington, D.C. Sure. I want to thank my brother, Smith Toby, for um, his Susan explanation. Now, um, I don't want to add to what uh, Tobasi, Tobasi just said, but I just gave you a short example from what he said and what I thought, I mean, um, the host of the show, the co-host, 
um, in the absence of um, how you call himself, um, Yeka Kolba to defend and dispute that which Smith said. But uh, someone just came on the show just and said that President Weir is a criminal. Mm -hmm. A lot of people to go free. Yeah. Uh, is there any evidence? Is there any evidence that, uh, that, that, uh, that President Weir is a criminal? This person came with a free talk and you allowed the person to go free, but you're holding Tobasi for what Tobasi is saying. Mm -hmm. let's, let's be very sensitive about, about what we say about people. To call his statement irresponsible and to call that, and to allow that gentleman to make his point and you give his point credence. I don't think it's a fair, it's a fair deal on the show. I just observe it. This is why I call you. So let's, let's look at how we do things on our show. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's go to the last caller. That will be your uh, 2403. Hello. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, hi. This is uh, Sam calling from Minnesota. Hi, Sam. Yeah, uh, my question to, yeah, to Smith, Toby, uh, thanks for coming on the show, would be uh, regarding uh, the insult towards the president. <clears throat> Do you remember when CDC was in opposition? Which of I don't support the insult that Yeko uh, uh, Kula is making. But Solomon George and the likes, they insulted Eddie Johnson on multiple occasions. What was the okra for the pastor that just called to? What was the okra? Did you guys give me a condemn? In the African setting, it's rare damning to cause a female. And that, of course, the CDC did it to Eddie Johnson on multiple occasions. Thank you. So, Yaga Kolba have no view of causing President George Weah murder. There is no evidence. He has insulted the president on numerous occasions, which I don't support. But for you people to suggest that he insulted the president, I mean, if President Mueller, you guys can show the video. But there is no way I have followed Yaga Kolba on numerous occasions. I have not seen, even that day, when the 102 put him over, he never insulted the president murder. Or no one insulted Claude Weah. But he has insulted the president, but not the president murder or his wife. Thank you. So what is your outcry when you they were causing any jersey to leave? That's the question. Thank you. <laughs> and let me just take the final, final question. For me, whether, uh, whether the, everybody knows yeah, the phone. Phone. So, whether it's the president model or somebody model, for me personally, that's irrelevant. We know he's, yeah. he's certain. But let's take the, uh, the, last, the last caller. Your name and where you calling from? Thomas Sogan calling from Des Moines, Iowa. Can you hear me? You are live. Go ahead. All right. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to say many thanks to, to Mr. Toby. I I like how he responded to some of these questions, and um, I think it's good. But uh, for this platform, can you people, people please do us a favor? At this time, next time when you call in for the press secretary to come on these kind of issues or any government spokesperson to come on, on these kind of issues, if you can also contact the, the political group that you try to defend, they are spokesperson to come and debate the issue with Smith Tobin. Then we will make issues, we will make decisions. Thank but uh, it seems to be like uh, you are the one that advocating and defending the, the political group against the government. Because for everything that you been, I think we have not seen, we have not heard anything good that you ask or say about the government. You always ask questions that sound negative, that government is so wicked to the citizens of Liberia and the opposition group are so nice. It's not fair. Right. Yeka Kolba, right, right, I don't want to repeat that word he used, but right on that on that top of the vehicle, he used a beautiful word against mothers. If if if, I could, if you could allow me, please, he said motherfucker. And at the time he was insulting the president at that time, he said motherfucker, who mother he fucking? He said like those women mother that he's he referring to, it's still wrong. He's a lawmaker. Why they say honorable? Is that the only example you want to set in the community? As a journalist and the press is telling us here today that you have not heard Yeke Koroba say this thing in the public and you are pretending to explain to it to me want to say those things. Try to be fair here. This program is, is okay, but sometimes when we listen to your, your interview, we can be bleeding because 
some of your questions they are like they are biased. Okay. You, if you take that track or take that, and this station should not be like a political I mean, opposition station. Thank you very much, Brother Tobey. And I will also encourage you to stand your ground and say the truth and, 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 and do the work the, the Liberal people gave you to do. And do not be afraid of anything and try to educate the, the youth as you've been doing. Maybe I can say here, you since the press people like Kwame Clement, like the Saros Badu, and all the other people, when we listen to you, I think we are listening to press. Thank For now in Liberia, I don't see, I don't, but please, the press in Liberia, the only party you can call you by, when you even in something that they laugh. But we want to listen to press who will ask technical question, question or controversial that we will, we will see you can call you by addressing, not only to be in something and threaten to drag the president in the street and you will be overthrown tomorrow and we'll do this thing and nobody bring that to we are not seeing your your platform to bring the call back to both your eyes on you thing. It thank seems you. to me that they are okay. But thank if the you, government you. government team says something you quit to bring that to both. Thank you very much. Thank you. And for your information, we have invited Yaga Koluba several times. We have invited a lot of other people. We we are very happy that Mr. Tobey is here. But it doesn't mean we are not inviting the other people. Let's go to Mr. Tobey. Mr. Tobey, your response to the callers, I think uh, we have so many callers, but we may not be taking all of them because of time. Mr. Tobey. Well, again, let me let me say thanks to the to the callers, and let me let me also say thanks to the both of you. Now you see how challenging it is um, to sit on the other side of the of the mic, and uh, we are trying our best. Uh, sometimes we slip in our um, presentation, and sometimes we, we try to, to make up. But again, you've you, you've established a very a very good platform. You need to um, stick to your game. I know sometimes people play the devil advocate because in the absence of another guess, uh, you will have to play the role of uh, uh, that devil advocate. So um, again, not many persons take voice to president lightly. Like somebody allow you uh, to allow the court who talked about the president corruption and other issues without evidence. And 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 other thing that, as a presenter of the show, you should rather be checkmating people on that point. But again, the president is not deterred um, by those comments without evidence, and um, his administration is not equally deterred by those comments without evidence. We know that Liberians around the world are having some very strong confidence in this administration. Partners to this administration equally believe in the ability of this government. That is why you see more assistance coming in to the government from the IMF, uh, the World Bank, the African Development Bank. If they are all seeing the government as corrupt, as all of the callers who call into the show have seen the government, I'm not sure the government will be surviving by this time. Because mm -hmm. the government is now receiving more support based on their transparent nature, uh, based on the procedure and processes that they've, they've, they've put in place. That is why you still see funding come to this government from the World Bank, from the IMF, and from other uh, international uh, uh, donors. So if the government were um, corrupt, as perceived by some Liberians out there, then I'm sure that this time, uh, the government uh, will be a different government. People would rather see this government go down the drain. Uh, but the government stay maintain you know, the, the tough ship. Uh, they are still um, doing their best to live up to the commitment of the Liberian people. And uh, those people who are die high opposition lovers and supporters who see nothing wrong, whether it is insult, whether it is protest, which of course is the right to bring government attention to. Once it is peaceful, uh, it is not driving away the investors. They see nothing wrong with anything. Everything they see is 
negative about this country. Uh, the president and his administration will do their best. That is why they were voted uh, by the Liberian people. Thank and they will friend. remain in that, in that direction. So let me, let me again say thanks to the both of you. I look forward to seeing you uh, uh, on another Sunday after this Sunday yep. uh, with more questions. And let me appreciate the viewers for keeping us on their viewer gadgets. Um, it's been, it is my pleasure. Let me understand greetings to all of you viewing us from the office of the president. And please enjoy your viewer stay and keep safe. We are staying in the midst of COVID. And let's pray for our country and pray for a better Liberia. Thank you. All right, Mr. Smith Tobe, we want to say thank you for always joining us. On this program Q and A with Smith Toby here, uh, focus on Liberia. We will not be. I will not be deterred by the criticisms. The criticisms uh, are good for me uh, to get better and, and and get stronger and even tougher. I will always ask questions that will piss people off because that's my job. My job is to ask questions. And so I will not stop doing even more of those questions that will piss people off. I'm not here to please anybody. The Deputy Presidential Press Secretary is happy with the job I'm doing by asking him the tough questions. And the President carries a lot of responsibility for our country. If anybody is thinking I will sit here to babysit the President, then you are mistaken. So if you come with your emotions here, well, you got me to contend with on the issues of governance because I'm not here uh, to play baby. Mr. Smith, Toby, as always, uh, thank you uh, for coming. Let me address uh, people that say I'm biased. If you think I'm biased, there are many platforms out there. If you don't want to let you don't like this channel, switch the channel. All right. Uh, again, I welcome the criticism. Don't stop criticizing me. I like that. But I'm also saying, if you don't like what I'm doing, switch the channel. Maybe that will help you because the noise you're making will not stop me from doing what I'm doing. They like it, Mr. 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 C. Except that uh, in these days, and Mr. Toby, again, thank you so much for availing yourself. We have tried to get a lot of people, and some will come, some will not, because uh, probably it's not a, it's no safe Zoom. But what what our policy have become is people have this binary thinking you have to be either opposition or pro-government. And so they have to do their best to put you in this or that corner. Yeah. So yeah, depending on how they feel. So if opposition will watch us and say, you are for the government, the government watch you and say, you are for opposition. So <laughs> we enjoy it, we love it, uh, we'll do our best. We are not where we want to be, but thank God we are doing our utmost best. And uh, keep your comments coming, keep your criticism, call us, give comments, and. It is because of you that we're doing what we do. Uh, keep the radar on us. Be tough so that we'll do our utmost best. We thrive under criticism. So we want to assure you that uh, we're doing our best. Mr. Toby, once again, thank you. Thanks to all our callers. We're very sorry that we couldn't take all the calls because uh, this was this is really for one hour. And uh, we go beyond that just to uh, give chance to all of you. This evening, join us at 6 o'clock. We're going to be having... Uh, continuing our segment, Where is God? Tonight's segment is Where is God in Natural Disasters, Pandemics, and Wars? Our guest will be, we have a, an Islamic scholar. We have a, a senior pastor of a church in California. We also have an adherent to African traditional beliefs, all sharing their views on where is God? Where does God stand when it comes to natural disaster, when it comes to wars, when it comes to pandemic like COVID-19? You sure don't want to miss it. And so, folks, we want to say right, thank, thank you, guys. All right. Thank you, Smith. And we want to thank you, you know, for watching our program here. Uh, like our Facebook page so you can get notification. Also, like our YouTube channel where we upload all of our shows. And we will appreciate that. Just by Smith to be being here, some people say we are pro-government. Then I see other people complaining that are opposition. There's somebody here that's saying this is opposition platform. You can't get me confused. We are in the middle. We have no side here. This is focus on Liberia, and we are focusing on Liberia. If Yaka Koluba honors any of our invitation, so is Mr. Cummings and any other political leader in Liberia. 
we will get tough with them. That's why we do. We ask tough questions. So we love your comments and your feedback. On that note, we have a song. And I love that song. And that song says we are all Liberians. That's part of all of the criticisms. Let us remain one Liberian. Thank you and bye bye. We are Liberians.